Yeah. Yeah. Bike, I call it thumper. Um, some people just call it Rick's bike. I'm sorry, Harley. I'm dead, I'm I was a parallel. Par I was there, too. Okay, you were where? I was at Paradise Harley Davidson in Tiger. Okay. And I was going to buy a brand new Harley. I wanted $5,000 down for it, and I would have had like $350 payments for like 12 years. No longer than that. What's really, really long? Like forever long. Like too long. Like how long ago Jim bought his Corvette? <laughs> and <laughs> that's how long I would have been making payments. But I was going to do the paperwork, and I walked in, and this thing was sitting in there with a price tag on it. it said five thousand dollars. It didn't look like this. It had a bunch of dents in it. It was all black. Uh, didn't have the half the chrome or anything on it. But I saw that tag, and I asked the guy what it was. He said it's eighteen hundred. And when I heard eighteen hundred. This is one of the biggest V-twins ever made. When this came out, it was the biggest V-twin ever made. I remember seeing a picture of one in a magazine from the back with the tire smoking. And uh, now I get to live that out. But anyway, so I, I got it, wrote it for a couple of years, and then uh, wrote it home one day and just tore it completely apart. Put all new uh, exhaust, chromed it out. Put this, uh, this is basically the equivalent to your tunnel ram on your Corvette right here, Jim. And you can see it's not just a pretty air cleaner. I've got the manifold to go with it. Um, uh, this thing's also equipped with a device over here called a power commander. I can plug a laptop in this thing. I can set it, set the uh, engine for whatever humidity or whatever I want. Um, I do have a rev limiter, limiter on. I do have the rev limiter set Thank you. where I won't be blowing up the engine because you never know when your hand's going to slip on the throttle and it gets twisted back too far. Hey, you had that happen. Then? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's why it's really got scary. that. It's set pretty. It's dialed in pretty good right now, though. Yeah, it looks really, really, really nice, actually. Nice custom paint job. Boatload well, of chrome. Well, on the paint, what I did is I didn't have the facilities to do my own paint, so I took the bike completely apart, uh, sanded everything down, and got it ready for spray. And I took it up to a paint uh, shop, and I had them paint it. Uh, metallic black, brought it home, wet sanded it and everything, laid out my own flames on it, taped everything off, took it back, had them uh, paint the flames with a sapphire metallic blue, brought it back again, wet sanded it again, took it up and had them shoot the clear, shoot the clear, took it back up and had them shoot the clear coat on it. I took it back up there and they shot clear coat on it. <laughs> what did they shoot on it? <laughs> shoot on it! So another cool little feature is that uh, when I put my skull air cleaner on, I went ahead and drilled out his eyeball and put a socket in there and a peanut bulb so it turns on when my ignition comes on. That's kind of cool. It looks a little cooler at night. I love this Cobra exhaust system. The, uh, the old exhaust system used to burn my leg when I wore shorts. And this one wraps around the engine room. Uh -huh. I put the chrome side covers on it, chrome frame covers, chrome uh, trailing arm covers. Put my skull mirrors on there. Did you get a shot of those skull mirrors? I haven't. Those are cool. You don't see those very often. I've got my LED turn signals, chrome uh, radiator cover with other turn signals on there. I put these lights on there because I couldn't tell if my turn signals were on at night. And these right here reflect on the inside of the forks so I can see it at night. Yeah, so it's 1800cc. It goes pretty good. Beautiful bike. Thanks, Jim. Would you like to borrow it? Can I go for a ride? Yes. Can I see if I can do a bigger burnout? Yes. <laughs> Such a liar. Because <laughs> I can, You know what I found out? This one's got two hours of filming, Jim. Look. You're, you're filming now, aren't you? Um, no, why? <laughs> this thing's got two hours of filming on it, so let's just do this stuff. All right. Because I'm slicey dicey. You are slicey dicey. So dicing. I'm just gonna walk up there and I'm gonna I'm gonna nail it. I'm gonna ace it, and you just try to follow along with me. Alrighty then. So this is my uh, everyday driver. 
1999 Mercedes-Benz E430 Sport. Uh, difference between the regular E430 and the 430 Sport is a bunch of AMG stuff. It's got the ground effects, front, side, rear spoiler, um, AMG fog lights, HID headlights. When I got it, I put the chrome trim around the wheel wells, put some 20s on it. Um, I didn't want to mess with the suspension, so I got lower profile tires for the front than the, than the rear. The rears are actually a little taller. That gives it a little bit of a rake without me having to mess with a bunch of stuff. Um, if you want to look at the inside, I had a buddy of mine named JB tint the windows for me. He has a mobile tuning service. He comes right out here to the house, does my windows, charge me a hundred bucks for this one. That was a deal though because I had done a bunch of other cars with him. Interior is real com comfortable. It's got power, everything, um, tilt, memory seats. The controls for the seats on the door are actually shaped like a seat, so it makes it easy to adjust them. Also, what I like about this car is it's got a uh, real fancy name. Uh, it says like ESP, traction control, and all this stuff, but I call it push button posi. <laughs> push the button, you got posi. Um, gets about 26 miles to the gallon. Real comfortable day to day driver. Johnny doesn't mess with me too bad with it. Got a all aluminum 4.3 liter V8 24 overhead valve. It's got 10 to 1 compression. Sequential multi port fuel injection pushing about 300 horsepower. So when you put your foot in it, it does squat. Gets up and goes pretty good, but I try not to beat on it. This is my, I need this for my work. And try to take care of it the best I can. It's also got a uh, five-speed automatic transmission with overdrive, four-wheel disc brakes, fully independent suspension, and like I said, the traction control and everything else. Airbags everywhere, including there, Jim. And uh, I put an Alpine deck in it. It's got a tilt face on it, CD. Um, sounds real good. It's one of those stairs you can crank up and it doesn't distort, it just gets loud. Good car. I'll take it. Not really. It doesn't really fall into the category of cars we built or anything because I didn't really spend that much time on it. But this is this is something that we like taking out. And when we go, a lot of times when we go to find stuff, we're just going to look at it. Or it's stuff that doesn't doesn't need a trailer and a truck. And uh, it's nice to ride in something comfortable. And, and it doesn't look too bad as you roll in. Yeah. And I call a nine one one. Got to be careful though. Sometimes you just got to drive the old '83 Chevy four-wheel drive truck that's all beat up and doesn't have any straight panels on it because sometimes this can cost you money when you roll up in it. If you think you got people. money, sometimes we have to fib a little bit, tell them it's a or boss's car or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing got hit me in a parking lot, messed up my tail light, so his insurance company paid for it. But I went ahead and ordered up the European tail lights where you change all the bulbs and everything. I think they look a little bit better with the stock and the black kind of goes with the blacked out thing I got going on. Nice.